And so on the back of Africa and the Middle East and many areas of Asia and Eastern Europe not having enough food, Greece collapsing basically. Greeks are having to dump their kids out on the street in mass. Record numbers of homeless, not drunk homeless, real homeless, right next door to resorts with rich, yuppie Americans laying around in the sun enjoying themselves while Greeks are there serving them drinks when their kids don't have food enough to eat at home. <clears throat> I think that causes resentment. And it's not that it's bad to want to go to Greece and land on the beach. That at least brings some tourism and helps the country. It's that it's, 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 it's obscene. Like, I'm getting to the point where I realize I need to go out and buy things and it helps the economy. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the, love our economy or hate our economy. That's what we've got is this consumer economy. I'm trying to develop a barter economy, a grassroots economy, but at the same time, it's not evil to own a nice house or have people that work for you. That's how the economy operates. But it becomes obscene at a certain point. When the whole world's collapsing and we're still sitting around having no idea what's going to happen once it gets here, and we have such a self-centered, yuppie society, can you imagine when hard times really hit America what it's going to be like? The answer is it's going to be hellish. It's going to be barbarous. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. When this empire goes down, which is it's designed to do and fold into the new global order, it is going to be spectacularly horrible. And that's why elites from Israel to the United States, from Germany to France, from England to Australia are buying armored redoubts in the middle of nowhere around other armored redoubts with private security forces already ready. Or they're moving to Switzerland or Luxembourg. And I said I'd go to your calls and I'm ranting. It's just that a caller points out the clear evidence that this Rebola thing stinks to high heaven. And then Obama, we, we break this down in, in the Obama deception. He was president-elect when we made it. It was released one month after he was in office. Two months after. And we exposed that he will invade Africa, that they will turn loose radical Muslims in North Africa to invade the whole area, use that as a pretext to roll in, invade, and take over. And how they would then use bioweapons to depopulate and then people see it happen, they're like, how do you know this? Because once you know, you understand the modus operandi. And it's not that Obama himself is doing it. It's that he's the front man because you got to have a black face on it or the people resist it. The British Empire never went away 60 years ago. It learned to remove its flag, put in its corporate front people, and then the locals will put up with three, four times the abuse from a local guy that looks like them. Then they'll put up from some white queen on the money. You take the white queen off the money and you put a black guy on the money and the people put up whatever they want. Let's skip this network break as I said I go to your calls to gain that time back. Nathan in Kansas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Thanks for holding. Hey, thank you. Hey, I wanted to uh, rewind the clock a little bit. Uh, going back to uh, early this year, to January sometime, alert FEMA seeks bio disposal for 1,000 hospital tents, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tents, the, the gear, and also the uh, disposal, the dumpsters to get rid of it all. Do you remember that? I do vaguely remember that, and your point's really well taken. Your, your audio is a little low. Talk right into your phone and repeat that headline again. Okay, basically, um, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to, to uh, get back to uh, a story that came out earlier this year. And it said, alert, FEMA seeks biodisposal for 1,000 tent, uh, tent hospitals within 24-hour notice. I remember that. I think that that plays into the open borders and Ebola in some type of way. Well, they're constantly buying billions of bullets and armored vehicles and building emergency. They've been buying huge incinerators, Homeland Security, for hundreds of millions and placing them all over the country. They've been digging in like the end of the world's coming. And, and, and the government's running around scared to death acting like it's real. So I don't know what they've told them. I know what's in a lot of the open documentation. I mean, they have the army training and the Marines to mow down whole cities, okay? Well, in, in, that, um, in that, I think they call it an RFI, 
uh, they were actually testing the responsiveness. You know, they were, they were, they were testing the ability to put up these tent cities or these uh, hospital tents and the disposal. And uh, one, of the, one of the things with it was it was within a 24 to 40 hour, eight hour notice. And uh, in the article, it states in uh, 1,000 different locations throughout the United States. And, you know, they, they've already, uh, uh, what is it, the CDC or, or someone, I, I can't remember exactly, but they've set up uh, all these uh, little areas throughout the southern kind of United States spread out that kind of pretty much shadows where all the, uh, the immigrants are going. Do you remember that? Or? Yes, there it is. It's a FEMA accelerates preparations for pandemic. January 2014, uh, plans for mass graves confirmed, government surveying cemetery readiness for flu outbreak. That was on the Fed Biz website. Uh, what was the exact headline? Because we've been trying to find it. And we're, but, uh, I remember the article. It was about six months ago. Give me the exact headline again. There it is. No, no that's an older article Alert. from 2009. Go ahead. Alert. Alert. FEMA seeks biodisposal for 1,000 tent hospitals. Within 24-hour notice. That's it. Alert, alert. FEMA seeks. Uh, 1,000 tent hospitals within 24-hour notice. All right, we'll put that up on screen. Thank you so much for pointing that out. That's when I say I've got all this background that I'm concerned with. There's just so much intel, so much data. Even if the threat isn't real, they're gearing up spending tens of billions on it like they never have before. Uh, hardening facilities, you name it, while trying to start a civil war between the Tea Party and the police, which they will prime the pump with, with false flags. That's clear. Because the Tea Party is about as pro-cop as you're going to get. I mean, it, it, to a fault, it's ridiculous how much they grovel to the establishment. Uh, and I'm not attacking police either. I'm just saying it's ridiculous to claim the Tea Party is going to link up with Muslim extremists. The Tea Party is going to blow up police. Any cop out there who's got any brain cells knows that's propaganda. So the question is, how will they sell the attack? They will provide the patsies. So you can see different game plans they've got, and you can see it all starting to come to a big, disgusting head right now. Anything else? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, one last thing. Um, you know, we've been talking about, uh, or you've been talking about uh, just being prepared and, you know, eating right and all that. And my thing is, uh, everybody needs to... Uh, to get the, the survival seed, you know, little vaults and things like that. But before you do that, you need to actually grow the food. You need to actually start a garden and, and learn how to actually garden. I mean, if you're going to depend on a, a survival seed vault and you've never grown before, um, you, you're in for a, a surprise. I mean, you actually need to get your, your gardens going. And uh, it doesn't take much, and you can literally go out into your backyard and pick your dinner. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. I've got fruit trees and a garden we plant, an early spring garden, a summer garden, and a fall garden. And especially if you have children, it's so much fun. Even if you have a small backyard, it's pretty easy to do. And I totally agree with you. People need to get the survival seed banks, save one, but plant the other. Even if you live in a city, they'll have community gardens where you can go get a free plot and plant it there. And it's just so enjoyable to take your own watermelon home, to take your own squash home, to take your own tomatoes home, to take your own peppers home. And if more people just get into it, big things have small beginnings, just like those seeds. Now is a perfect time to, to order a backup fall garden, winter garden, before you know it, it'll be spring. We have the widest selection of non-GMO, high quality organic seeds. We carry like eight different companies' seeds, at the lowest prices at the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. And so that way you get a great uh, price on something that helps you and your family and funds this operation. So a win-win-win at the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, let's talk to Casey in Ohio. Thanks for holding. Hey, yeah, this is Casey in Oklahoma. Hey, I just want to bring up a point. You and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs were talking last week. Uh, I believe it was on the anniversary of September 11th. Yes. How Obama didn't even mention anything about the Christians being attacked and killed by uh, ISIS, ISIL, whatever the heck he wants to call them, you know, for this week or for this hour. And uh, because it's because what is in charge and who is in charge of the shadow government that we don't see, that people are just totally oblivious to because of the statism that they're force-fed every day and they accept it as gospel.
It is a Luciferian, satanic cabal that is in charge that has, does nothing and wants nothing more than to control us and be tyrannical over every aspect of our lives. I know you said you just want people to talk about Ebola and stuff like that. You know, and earlier you had said something, what is it, uh, uh, the year of chaos? Or how did you say that? I forgot how you, how you uh, had said that. It's just a season of chaos on every front. The people running world civilization are trying to wreck things on purpose. And we even have their own documents, like Agenda 21, where they admit it. Exactly, exactly. And see, it goes back to something that this isn't a Bible, that the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, what would be the signs of the times of the end of the world? Jesus told them there would be uh, wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. But he said something else after that that people forget. He said, then shall come the sorrows of sorrows such as never been seen before by man on the face of the earth. And this is that, that season of chaos that you're talking about. And these glitter bug 501c3 uh, preachers that get up there and, tell, and preach the rapture, you know, that we're going to be taken away and we're not going to have to suffer. Jesus said in the Bible, who are you that you should not suffer even as your master suffered? These people. Well, sure, Christ said they'll persecute you like they persecuted me. And I'm not here being a Pharisee saying I'm all high and mighty and I'm great. I pray, I mean, I pray privately. My, my issue is these name it and claim it prosperity preachers have been linked to the government and they're there purely trying to neutralize Christians so they won't be politically and culturally and spiritually involved telling them everything's wonderful like opiate, like a drug, like a sleeping gas to put them into a trance. And it turns out they are clergy response team, certified government agents, on record to pacify people. And let me tell you, I wouldn't want to be those preachers on Judgment Day because leading your flock into the one world government, telling them that everything's great and the, and the worst things get wonderful, it means Jesus is around the corner. Uh, that just sounds like a total cop-out. Does anybody who's a Christian think that God is looking for uh, people like that? That God is testing us here? to try to find people like that. Uh, it, it, that's why I'm so angry at these preachers. You can see these devil worshipers and other scum, they're out in the open, and I don't like them. But these sneaky government agents, in fact, guys, go to YouTube, type in clergy response team. It's a um, NBC news piece out of New Orleans where they have the preachers admitting we work for the government, so folks accept martial law. We broke that three years before with Pastor Butch Paul here on air before it was finally admitted on the news. But now they think we're so stupid, they admit that they've turned most of our preachers into actual government agents, which totally violates the First Amendment. The First Amendment says government isn't supposed to be involved, not that government has a jurisdiction over religion. God bless you, I appreciate your call. We're gonna go to break and come back with Kelly, Barbara, Frago, Paul, and others. But before I do that, let's go out to break with this TV news piece on the clergy response team. Let's start it at the beginning. And then we'll go to break and come back. reality in America. Some fear any nuclear, biological, or chemical attack on U.S. territory might trigger just that. And as KSLA News 12 Jeff Farrell discovered, the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. From my cold, dead hands. Charlton Heston's famous declaration captures a truly American value, the overarching desire to protect our freedoms. But gun confiscation is exactly what happened during the state of emergency following Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. U.S. troops also arrived, something far easier to do even now thanks to last year's elimination of the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. That forbid U.S. troops from policing on American soil. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with, and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. Oh. In a lot of cases, these clergy We're gonna come back. be known in the neighborhoods. And, and again, they begin the report saying, under martial law, the clergy response team will make you basically submit. We're going to break down what these wolves will do during a disaster.
We're on the march. The 